Hi, this is Benjamin, founder of Farm Again. We just crossed a crucial milestone of crossing 10 years in the field of uh, precision agriculture. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we really did in the last 10 years, the kind of researches that we carried out, the product lines we brought to the market, and also a journey into the future, what we have in our mind as planned for the next uh, few years to long term. All of us would have heard about uh, Green Revolution. So uh, it was during the period between 1950s and 1970s. There was a severe drought and because of which uh, there was a loss of productivity and which resulted in a large population of this world was not really able to eat. And that is when Green Revolution came in, a lot of scientists got involved. And the concepts of uh, hybrid seeds and the chemical fertilizers were given birth during that period. And thankfully, it did its job. People were uh, able to eat because uh, with less water, they were able to produce more food using the hybrid seeds and the chemical fertilizers. And therefore, the hunger uh, really did come down. So after the Green Revolution, uh, technologies evolved uh, in agriculture. And again, if you really compare across uh, other industries as well, uh, post-1950s, the, uh, the advancements of technology was immense. Uh, you can see now the uh, information technology industry. We talk about artificial intelligence and it is really going to a level that was unimagined uh, even 10, 15 years ago. And if you look at uh, uh, industrial automation, even the automotive industries, the level of sophistication that has gone into uh, is really unimaginable. If you compare the uh, technological advancements of other industries and agriculture, uh, you really cannot say uh, agricultural technological advancements uh, is highly developed. And also we cannot say that it has been widespread like in other industries. Uh, it is, it, the, the highly developed technologies are limited to few pockets and few geographical regions across the world. Does, hasn't really reached uh, to, to the hands of uh, most farmers. And if you look at uh, sophisticated paddy growing countries, they use uh, transplanters where uh, the machine has the capability to pick one single plant and then keep planting and finish a few acres of planting in a matter of a couple of hours. And such advancements uh, have not really come uh, to our place. And uh, it is there, but uh, very, very limited extent. And this is the time we got into the field of agriculture. And uh, our objective was to get into the precision farming and really uh, revolutionize how precision farming is being seen, not just in India, but uh, across the world. So we started off with a few trials in 2013. Uh, the major crops that we started with were uh, tomato and uh, watermelon. So we had consultants who were knowledgeable, who were able to guide us on precision farming. And we did develop a kind of an SOP before we uh, actually ventured into farming. And uh, we went by the book and the results were amazing. For example, we had great yields in uh, uh, tomato, but what was important was uh, as far as watermelon goes, generally if you go to a field, you will see watermelon uh, size ranging between uh, one and a half kilos and eight and even 10 kilos. And the, when, you, when you take it to the market, from 6 kg to about 10 kg goes as first quality or first grade. And anything less than that goes as a second grade. And if you go to a farm where they grow watermelon, uh, you will see the second grade being probably 60% to 80% and the remaining would be the first quality. And first quality is where they get the best uh, revenue. And in our, ex in our case, we really had taken a lot of painstaking effort and the end result was uh, fantastic. We were able to get almost uh, uniform size on all the uh, fruits. Um, the typical size range was anywhere between six and a half and uh, uh, eight kilos and almost uniform. The second quality was uh, hardly, uh, uh, you know, few tons across uh, 40 acres of uh, cultivation. So with these two crops, we were very, very confident that the concept of precision farming is going to really work. And uh, once we gained confidence, we tried few other crops, typical crops that we uh, get in our uh, region. And uh, almost all the crops, we had grand success. So after we, ha we had seen success in our own uh, farm, what we did was we spread across India and we, we collaborated with farmers from different regions. And uh, we were trying to uh, share the knowledge we had gained 
um, and we were trying to get them also onto position farming. And again, uh, if we if we spoke to let's say hundred farmers, maybe three four would sign up um, into into the uh, precision farming trials. And each of those trials were actual phenomenal success. Um, and uh, the second cycle, so a farmer uh, who was able to get about eighty four tons of uh, tomato in his second cycle was only able to get around 17 to 18 tons. And it was not only um, the, the farmers uh, who we collaborated with and tried precision farming, it was back in my farm as well. Uh, any crop we try for the first time, we see a massive success. And in the second attempt, it was not a massive success, including in my own farm. And when we tried uh, understanding the reasons behind, uh, collected the data, uh, you know, tried making a comparison, what we understood was uh, as we gain knowledge in one cycle uh, and get into the next cycle, uh, typically we tend to get into some kind of uh, short uh, cuts instead of following the book asses. So these short cuts actually resulted in uh, not so great uh, productivity. A, a typical example is, I mean, if you really do X plus Y the whole square, uh, the result has to be always consistent provided X and Y don't change. And when you do change X and Y, the results will change for sure. So that is exactly what happened in our uh, case as well. Uh, we had an SOP, but the adherence to the SOP was not as great in the second time as it was in the first time. And because of which the results started going down. Which is when we felt the need to build a technology around this, where um, the process adherence or the SOP adherence is not human dependent, but rather a technology driven just like uh, an industrial automation would run and that is how the concept of uh, uh, Grotron came in. That is when we felt a need to build a technology that will follow the SOP on its own and uh, eliminate human dependency as far as possible in uh, adherence to the SOP. So if you are able to build a technology of that kind then and if you are able to eliminate human dependency as far as the SOP adherence is concerned the x, y, x plus y, the whole square has to remain intact. That was the principle behind. And we just went ahead building a technology. So when we started building, it, building uh, the technology, uh, we tried applying the knowledge we had gained um, uh, into the technology. So what the knowledge we gained was this. It was called the three golden rules of agriculture. The rule number one, maintain the right moisture at the root zone and we named it as air water balance. So the maintain the right air and water balance at the root zone. The rule number two, according to the genetic capacity of the plant, calculate the right fertilizers in a way the plant will take what it needs and there is nothing left in the soil as a residue. So, and make that mineral available to the soil when it needs, rule number two. And the rule number three, if you follow rule number one and rule number two, the plant has no other option but to perform. And these were the three golden rules of agriculture. Of course, there are other parameters such as soil EC, soil pH, the sunlight, CO2. These are all, excluding these, the core of the three principles is what we followed in the uh, core of the technology. So we went ahead building a technology where uh, the air water balance of the soil was maintained by continuously sensing the soil and uh, based on the feedback from the sensors we again built an artificial intelligence layer where uh, the uh, data from the sensors as well as from weather stations will be used to predict when the moisture may dry up and uh, before it could dry up irrigate it so that the moisture doesn't dry. So to that extent we had used network of sensors, uh, actuators to actuate the valves and the, the, the whole uh, uh, journey was made completely autonomous. And it is not only the irrigation, we also built a fertigation system where the right fertilizer, right quantity, right time to the right zone was supplied. And all of it again was autonomous. Now, is that enough? Are these three golden rules enough? Of course, uh, enough for the basic operation, but not really a comprehensive uh, uh, operation. Therefore, what we did was, after we launched our uh, system with these basic principles, uh, where the air water balance was maintained and the um, right mineral 
at the right quantity to the right zone was applied. We went on to build systems where you could do pH balance, you could uh, actually um, maintain a certain EC in the, in the uh, fertilizer you supply. And uh, we even went on to building a system that could balance carbon dioxide within a closed uh, uh, cultivation method. And we could also manage lightings. So we went on to build this technology as comprehensive as possible where um, you could really take care of the entire gamut, the whole spectrum of uh, agricultural space, particularly the crop growing phase. A uh, lot of technologies have come for uh, pre-cultivation and post-harvest, but we specifically stuck to and focused on the uh, during cultivation phase. That is where we wanted to have our technology uh, intervention uh, to take place. So, uh, the like you said, we built this technology. The expected outcome with which we built this technology was primarily to increase the productivity. Um, so, from the same area, can I get more harvest was one um, objective we had. The second objective obviously was uh, to see how much of water can be reduced. And today, I can proudly say that uh, um, we have been instrumental uh, in all the farms where we have installed Grotron to exactly achieve these two uh, objectives. And most farms have reduced their water usage by certainly more than 50%. And uh, some may not have as much as 50%, but most certainly have saved more than 50% uh, of water. And the second, uh, on the productivity front, um, to give you some numbers, uh, we have been able to get uh, 84 tons uh, tomato, around 106 tons uh, sugarcane, um, and tomato again. I, I have to insist that it is uh, open form uh, cultivation. So we have even uh, collaborated with uh, institutions like Tamil Nadu Agricultural University, and we have done uh, paddy cultivation with uh, uh, drip irrigation and Grotron, and have seen massive success with that. Uh, so most of the crops, uh, most of the farmers that we have worked with, uh, we have been able to really show great productivity gain and uh, um, reduction in water, absolute terms, uh, heavy reduction in uh, water usage. And uh, because of these benefits, what we also see is that uh, most of our business comes only through reference. Um, one farmer satisfied shows another farmer to us and that is how we grow our business. We have really not done great advertisements and it is only through uh, referrals uh, from our farmers and uh, most farmers also have high regards for the way we uh, give them post installation service and uh, uh, similarly most farmers have got high regard uh, in our approach towards sale itself where we don't really force them into a sale rather try to give a solution. Uh, so last 10 years uh, just to summarize um, we tried precision farming, learned the art, built a team, built a technology, matured it. Now the, the technology uh, wise it is in the version 3 uh, and uh, uh, we have been able to really show productivity and reduction in water. Uh, we, have been all, uh, we have also been able to uh, keep our customers happy because of our post installation service. And one more uh, important point I wanted to say is that uh, when we show reduction in water usage, it directly uh, correlates to the amount of carbon footprint uh, uh, we actually uh, contribute to. And uh, uh, most industries it has become a common practice where they can exchange carbon credit. And in agriculture also I foresee this uh, happen in all the countries. And when that happens and when we are able to uh, authentically say that we have been able to reduce this much uh, water. Uh, there could be a day in the near future where the farmers will be able to exchange carbon credit and benefit even uh, on that uh, front. I hope uh, the contents in this video was useful. Maybe you were able to get one or two insights and uh, thank you for watching. So um, if you did find this uh, video useful, please do share with your friends and uh, if you really want to get notified, do subscribe to our channel. Thank you. See you in the next video.